construed manager Christianity's position. Due to substantial challenges any faker would face, the shroud does not look handmade. Arthur Lind and Mark Antonacci experimented to reproduce the look of the bloodstains. Their paper's experimental approach is to show that natural methods by an artist cannot duplicate the shroud's blood details. The researchers dripped, drizzled, and brushed fresh pig blood onto plastic, fabric, leather, humans, and chickens in low humidity and high humidity. Some blood was dry, while some was moistened with aloe or water. To slow clotting down, some blood was stirred, while some was blended with lemon juice. Some of their blood stains fit some of the features of the shroud blood, some fit other features. No single experiment fit all of the features. The blood flaked off or spread out too far beyond the painted outline, or didn't transfer to the cloth, or did but didn't soak through, or didn't have dark, raised edges or indented centers. Clotting of untreated blood was a real problem. Most transfers were ineffective within half an hour. Clotting blood on plastic shows upraised edges, like on the shroud, but clotting blood on warm skin does not. Serum rings, which we've seen in prior videos, are another problem. They show up hundreds of times on the shroud through UV photography, chemical tests, and microscopes, but the experiments couldn't duplicate them. Many attempts show no serum at all. For others, when dry, the brittle serum broke off. Attempts to separate blood from watery serum with a paintbrush failed. So do the shroud bloodstains look handmade? Not to these researchers who tried to hand make them. Here's a paper showing some of the same challenges for fakers. And here are several papers from Adri Vanderhoven, a physics alumna with Delft University of Technology, with more experiments showing similar obstacles. More than that, Vanderhoven's papers present fakers with another significant hurdle. She concludes, the blood got on the shroud before the image. That's a bit like a road crew striping the highway before they pave it. Vanderhoven's excellent paper is very technical, so we'll simplify. She offers a three-part thesis. The linen was coated with a starchy, plant-based dye before the blood or image got on it. Specifically, a dye made from the matter plant like this one. Acidic postmortem blood interacted with the dye. And in the non-blood areas, the image formation process altered the chemistry of the coating. If she's right, the blood was on first. Otherwise, the image formation process would have altered all the coating even under the blood, and the blood would not have the pinkish-red hue we see. Is she right? Consider all the evidence her thesis explains. Microchemical tests detect starch impurities. Uncoated linen is brittle and absorbent, but the shroud is supple and repels water. The shroud has an ultra-thin, yellow-colored layer, but uncoated linen does not. Infrared analysis of threads shows a colored coating with traits that fit matter dye. Blood on uncoated linen turns brown, but the shroud's blood is pinkish red. Although the shroud repels surface water, these researchers detail at least two events that caused water to soak in. These water stain patterns were likely caused when the folded shroud was stored in a jar and water got in. The other event was in 1532, when water drenched a burning shroud. Photography shows that the fire dousing water stains lighter and less yellow than the other water stains. This is easy to explain with the author's thesis. Starchy, matter-based dye dissolves in hot water, like from extinguishing a fire, but not in cold water. The shroud was covered with mildew spores, but no mildew. Matter plants' components are antifungal, antimicrobial, and insecticidal. Chemically, this is real blood, but many stains test too acidic to be lifeblood. Conclusion? The acidic blood is postmortem. A lot of details reinforce this conclusion. Measurements of how energy reflects off the blood stains, 
fit acidic postmortem blood on linen coated with dye. The shroud blood lacks potassium. This is consistent with postmortem blood. When the serum oozed out, potassium drained away with it. The blood studies show how hard it is to form and transfer serum rings to cloth. However, the task is much easier when blood clots first on a cold surface, like a dead body. Last, these shroud researchers showed the image was produced through some dehydrative oxidative process. Vanderhoven oxidized a linen coated with starchy matter dye. Look how closely it matches the shroud. So the last three videos conclude the shroud looks like it wrapped a bloody corpse. The blood is real, clotting blood. Experiments don't look like the shroud. And the blood curiously got on the cloth first, before the image. Given all this, our position is that the shroud blood stains do not look handmade. We'll end with an observation. Here are some of the better attempts to hand make the image. Where are the blood stains? As a proper test, shouldn't each of these have started with blood stains? Why do you suppose they skipped that step? Next, some peculiar traits of the image argue against it being handmade.